看，可先讲打哈欠，<笑>你该把它录下来的。有，我是自由录。啊，但<笑>我足够在打哈欠的，<笑>好精彩哦！嗨，大家好，我们今天不是不负责任，今天是负责的负责访问。<笑>对，要今天是负责任的一场访问。<笑>我们今天非常荣幸邀请到了贝里斯驻台湾大手，大家叫 Candice Pitt。然后我们等下跟他其实会有一场大概蛮精彩的专访。其实我们已经访问完了，我先问一下可心，你在这场专访前对贝里斯的印象？是如何呢？我有认识一个贝里斯人，然后就来台湾念书的。那时候我就说，哇，英文真的是非常好，就就是嗯，就是美国的英文这样子。然后就之后透过这个人才了解，就是说、哦、他们是完全全英语的国家，根本就是母语，就是英文母语的国家。<笑>然后就那时候就很不好意思，然后就从他开始认识贝里斯。OK， 但是坦白讲，还知道是邦交国，然后嗯，知道在中南美洲，但是除此之外，好像就。了解的并不多了，我只知道他有很多的玛雅文化遗迹哦，就反而玛雅文化不是在我们其他记得的地方，對對對反而贝里斯是蛮多的。嗯、哦，然后当然我记得的贝里斯的东西又更是一些政治性的东西，比如说他跟邻国的边界关系啊什么的嗯嗯嗯。啊，我觉得那个对于那样的认识都不太精准。你当然认识一个国家，你还是想知道他的文化嘛。而且我觉得要去过，像你看台湾人。对日本好认识哦，因为因为我们太常去了，所以就觉得哎，但是日本坦白说又不是一个邦交国，就是呀，所以你看我们怎么可以这么不认识我们的邦交国？对对。好，那我们等一下的访问里面会提到了蛮多的哦，包含到了前大师介绍贝里斯这个国家，然后我们还用非常有趣的形容词哦，就如果台湾跟贝里斯是两个学生，我们是班上什么样的同学？我觉得他的答案非常非常的有趣，也很感动。然后同时间，呃，来到这里，其实我们不可能只聊吃吃喝喝。对，其实我们聊了蛮多贝里斯在中美洲的政治状况，然后还有到中美的现在大国的对抗之下，贝里斯如何界定他自己在国际上的地位。嗯嗯嗯。然后，可是你有问到关于到了台湾跟贝里斯怎么合作嘛？对不对？对，我觉得这也是蛮有趣的。最后，我觉得。我很喜欢大使的回答，然后你从他回答可以看到，其实台湾跟贝里斯有很多在地缘还有历史发展上面的相似之处。我们虽然是地球的两端，但我们对于这一些主权，然后对于民主，嗯、呃，还有对于他们也历经了这个比较呃 peaceful transition， 就是。和稳定的转移政权，对对对，和平转移这个政权。那我发现其实就跟台湾有蛮多意想不到，就是之前没有了解过的这些相似之处，然后是值得我们在发展这段关系上面更着重的部分。现在心里很痒，就觉得好想要赶快订个机票，对，很想要去。大使把他介绍的非常吸引人哦，然后。我们当然还有提到一个关键问题，就是中国,中國在这边的角色，因为就过去几年，中国在嗯整个美国的后花园、嗯，这个嗯中中美洲地区，他们不断的在扩张他们的影响力，然后又有问到说他们受到的影响，我觉得大使回答的非常的。对，我我觉得有点保守，但是他当然也不能讲太多，但他很清楚的只说我们选择的是台湾。对他讲了不止一次。我们选择了台湾，所以接下来这段专访呢，呃，我希望大家可以看到是一个邦交国如何抵抗其他的外交干扰，然后很努力的跟台湾维系关系。他们到底有些台湾说到底图什么？我想在这场专访里面，你就可以看到他们是为什么愿意选择台湾。然后，当然希望看完之后你们也可以跟我们一样。很想要赶快买机票去贝里斯。然后，如果是收听 podcast 的听众呢，因为我们接下来是全英文访问哦，那有些内容其实会比较艰深一点，但我们会把所有的中文字幕都放在 YouTube 上面。所以，如果你听一听觉得哎，想要去确认你听到内容正不正确的话，欢迎到 YouTube 收看。那我们正好就开始喽。Okay, it's our pleasure to have you today, Ambassador. As we know that Belize has a formal diplomatic tie with Taiwan. However, I don't think there's much Taiwanese people. Know much about your country, so could you kindly give us a brief introduction to Belize? Absolutely. And first, let me express that it's my honor to be here. Thank so you. thank you so very much for the invitation、mm. and for this platform for us to discuss the、mm. diplomatic relationship between Belize and Taiwan.、Mm. And to answer your question, Belize is a country with a multicultural population of a little less than half a million、uh, people. And our population comprises ethnic groups such as the Mayans, the Creoles, the Mestizos, the Garifuna, the East Indian, Mennonites, and 
uh, a small percentage of, of other. Uh, Belize is the only English-speaking country in mm -hmm. Central America. Yeah. Uh, Mexico borders us to the north, Guatemala to the west mm -hmm. and to the south, as well as Honduras and the Caribbean Sea um, to the east. While Belize is geographically located in Central America, it is also geopolitically a part of the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. Um, as we are members of Caribbean polities and organizations such as CARICOM, Caribbean Communities, yeah. that helps to facilitate economic integration between member states and mm. trade and investment and um, the free flow of people for the purposes of uh, study and, and work and other purposes. And we are also a member of Central American organization and polities such as CICA, mm. the Central um, American Integration System, that also helps to integrate the member states uh, economically and uh, for purposes of uh, development. We are trade and investment um, between Belize and Taiwan mm. and other uh, countries in Southeast Asia um, is concerned. Belize occupies a geostrategic location because being a member of Central America, we have access to the Central American market of over 180 million people. Um, and we also have access to the Caribbean market of another an additional 45 million people. Mm. As I mentioned, we are the only English speaking country in Central yeah. America. Um, our politics is stable. Um, after every national elections, we witnessed the um, peaceful transfer of power. Um, our economy is also stable. Our currency has been um, two Belize dollars to one US dollar for the past wow. 40 years. So you mentioned about the uh, peaceful transition and the multicultural of Belize. Actually, that rem that's a, uh, some, some similarity between Taiwan and Belize. And I'm really interested in what is the thing that Belize are most proud of? If you have mentioned one or two things. I will begin by saying that Belizeans would concur that we represent a revered nationality mm -hmm. as Belizeans. And we are most proud that Belize is a country with um, monumental and vast cultural and ethnic diversity. Um, we have a a strong and vibrant democracy and many untapped natural resources. In fact, Belize is home to the largest barrier reef in mm. the Western Hemisphere and our wondrous Great Blue Hole is a part of that reef system. People globally would travel to Belize often just to explore the Great Blue Hole. We are also home to, um, and these are some of the features for which we are most proud. We are home to uh, the first jaguar preserve in the world, mm -hmm. um, our monumental rainforest, fascinating biodiversity, delectable cuisines, um, a rich and, and glorious history and heritage, and importantly, Belize's greatest assets um, are its people. Mm. A warm, friendly, yeah. smart, resilient people with um, unmatched potentials. So definitely not a question that you can answer yeah, like, with one we, or two, yeah. two answers, right? Yeah. Um, and I, as I know, that September 21st is the Belize Independence Day. Could you tell us more about the story behind this day and uh, how does Belize people uh, celebrate this day usually? So on Independence Day, September 21st, um, Belizeans not only celebrate our freedom, mm -hmm. but we also pay tribute to the ones who fought for this freedom and to the ones who are committed to safeguarding our freedom. I would say we also pay tribute to those Belizeans who had the vision for mm. our country, the vision of uh, sovereignty, the vision of freedom, the vision of prosperity, of development, of peace, of equality. And we also pay tribute to those Belizeans, those of us who are committed to realizing this vision. And September is our most festive and patriotic month mm -hmm. because it is the month uh, during which we celebrate um, our Independence Day. However, there is a calendar of events leading up to the celebration of Independence Day. And this year, our calendar of events actually started with um, August 1st, the mm -hmm. commemoration of Emancipation, Emancipation Day. And um, Emancipation is uh, that 
moment in history when um, the enslaved Africans mm -hmm. of the, the Caribbean were freed. Mm -hmm. And I mentioned earlier that Doe Belize is geographically a part of Central America. It's geopolitically a part of the Caribbean, and that's because we share um, cultures and we share history with the people of the Caribbean. And a part of that history is our history of oppression mm -hmm. and enslavement. Mm -hmm. And so um, in August 1st, 1834, the enslaved Africans were freed in the English-speaking Caribbean, so those okay. countries that were colonized by mm -hmm. Britain. Mm -hmm. And now every August 1st, we commemorate um, Emancipation Day. The English-speaking Caribbean allies of Taiwan commemorated Emancipation Day here in Taiwan with um, a basketball tournament. Hence, I was limping <laughs> into the studio today because I was also playing and I accidentally sprained my ankle. But, oh. but the good news is yeah. Belize won. The Belize team won. Yeah. <laughs> so Congratulations. We, brought, we brought home gold for, for Belize. Um, but so uh, our calendar of events uh, this year for Belize started with Emancipation Day. And we have other events such as um, the celebration of uh, St. George's Key Day or September 10th. We also have our juve, which will lead into our carnival day um, and other events. And then, of course, we are going to celebrate uh, September 21st, our Independence Day. Wow, you will celebrate your national day in a month. Well, For a month, that, well, that's well, long period uh, well, of celebration. This year, uh, apparently, it's, um, uh, it's longer than a month, but usually it is a month. Yes. Wow, we only yes. celebrate for one day. One day, yeah. and yes. as a normal holiday. Yeah, yeah we don't <laughs> do anything. <laughs> Something we should learn, should learn yeah. from Belize. Yeah. yeah, okay. I'm sure that uh, our audience has more questions about Belize, the yeah. country, but I'm curious about yourself, that how many years you spent in Taiwan, and what's your experience like? I have been stationed in Taiwan for three years and five months. And it, it, it feels as though I've been here a little longer just because <laughs> I, have been, uh, I have been so busy yeah. um, okay. getting um, the work done for mm -hmm. my country as well as just meeting people. Mm -hmm. And um, just exploring Taiwan, exploring the cultures, um, exploring the society. I think that um, Taiwan uh, creates a great platform for us to nurture and to um, augment the mm -hmm. relationship, the diplomatic relationship between Belize and Taiwan. So I have been um, super busy, but yeah. ex uh, enjoying the experience in Taiwan thus far. Is there any culture shock yeah. you know, when, when you first came to Taiwan? Any like fun story to share? You know, whenever I, I am sure Ivy will be familiar with my response, because whenever <laughs> I'm asked this question, I'm, my response remains the same. I haven't encountered any um, cultural shocks. I haven't been really? culturally shocked per se. Oh, okay. And the reason for that is um, I had traveled extensively yeah. um, prior to being stationed in Taiwan. In fact, I had visited the region a, a few times before uh, being in Taiwan. And so though there are differences between countries, certainly, um, there are some similarities in terms of the, the, the cuisines, mm -hmm. right, in terms of the cultures. Um, so when I was presented with Taiwanese cuisines and Taiwanese cultures, I had some exposure to it, uh, okay. to those um, before. However, there are some um, differences, and um, we know that our differences distinguish us as peoples, right? And one of those differences manifested itself in an experience I had at the embassy. And we have uh, a custom at the embassy where Whenever there is an event, mm -hmm. we would uh, decide on a token or a souvenir to give to our guests as a, a, a token of appreciation. Yeah. And so for one of those events, I had suggested to our executive secretary, Ivy, that perhaps we should consider customizing an umbrella with the... Uh -huh. oh, oh, no, that's a no-no. That's a no-no. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> An umbrella. Right. Oh, exactly. you can... No, no, exactly. You, yeah. so, so I was explaining to her, right, that for, for me, for me, 
an umbrella would be very functional. Yeah, it's right? useful for very time useful. use. Yeah. Right. Um, because in Belize, we have two seasons, right? We <laughs> yeah. have the rainy season and we have the dry, the dry season. season. Yeah. yeah. And so an umbrella is extremely useful, yeah. right? And I've also seen Taiwanese with umbrellas Every even day. when it's not raining, yeah, you know, for the sun. When, it, when there is no sun. So yeah. I thought that would have been functional. And Ida's response was similar to yours. She was like, Ambassador, I don't think that's a good idea. <laughs> Um, and she explained that um, the gesture of giving someone an umbrella in Taiwan yeah. symbolizes departure, it symbolizes yeah. death, right? And so it, it wasn't a shock to me. I just found it to be very interesting and to be different, right? So I learned something, right? Yeah. I, I acquired a piece, a new piece of knowledge. So to answer your question, no, I haven't really been culturally shocked in Taiwan. I want to imagine that Belize and Taiwan are two students. Okay, mm -hmm. so in Asian stereotype, like Taiwanese is a very delicate student. Mm -hmm. We work hard, we study hard. In this analogy, yeah. what kind of student Belize will be? All right, that's a very interesting question yeah. um, from the perspective of an educator. So yeah. I, I was also a college professor for 10 yes. years, right? Um, and my perspective is that, or I would describe Belize and Taiwan as being friends, you know, yeah. students who are very good friends. Mm -hmm. On the part of Taiwan, a very helpful friend. You know, those students uh, in, in class, there is always a student in every class who is extremely helpful, yeah. right? <laughs> yes. To everyone in the class. Yes. And I, I, would, I would characterize Taiwan as that very helpful student. Raising wow. right? all the time, like, I can help. <laughs> <laughs> right? Offering, right? Volunteering yeah. to help yeah. and genuinely wanting to help, right? And I think that that has been the relationship between um, Taiwan and Belize. Taiwan has always been very supportive of Belize, supportive of Belize's uh, development. And on the part of Belize, I would describe Belize as a reliable oh. friend. We have always supported Taiwan's yeah. identity as uh, an independent people. Mm. And we stand by that. Also, I, I, I explained our appreciation for our sovereignty. Our sovereignty is one of Belize's greatest values. Mm -hmm. Our sovereignty ah, is yeah. one of Belize's great, greatest assets, right? Our sovereignty is one of Belize's greatest features. And as a reliable friend, we have chosen to, every time we advocate for Taiwan um, in international uh, foras or when we support Taiwan in international communities, yeah. what we do is that we align our sovereignty we align our most important asset with Taiwan. And if other larger countries would do the same, they would also make a great difference, you know, for Taiwan. Additionally, I would describe um, Belize and Taiwan as being diligent and steadfast, and importantly to succeed at safeguarding their sovereignty and their territorial integrity. Wow, the answer is touched. Yeah, I think like there we do share lots of similarity of Taiwan and Belize. Yeah, I want to go further about our relationships, but here's one more question about your experience in Taiwan. That I think this one is a very serious question that most Taiwanese people are concerned about. Mm -hmm. In your opinion, which country has hotter weather? That's that's an interesting question. Really? So I will I will answer it from a scientific. Um, Scientific perspective first. Okay. She's a professor. Yeah. <laughs> Geographically, right? Yeah. Belize is located a thousand plus miles away from mm. the equator. Yeah. And Taiwan is located uh, at least 500 mm. or more miles yeah. farther away from the equator than Belize. Yeah. And the science would indicate that those countries that are closer to the equator are warmer Other, yeah. and those uh, countries that are far th farther away are a little cooler. Would suggest that Taiwan would be cooler than Belize. Yeah. However, <laughs> uh, based on the perspective and the experiences yeah. of those Belizeans who traveled to or visited Taiwan and those Taiwanese actually who traveled to or visited Belize, they argue that Belize is cooler. Argue. <laughs> yes, their, their, their point of view is that Belize is cooler because Belize has 
the, the sea breeze. Yeah. In fact, um, for those Belizeans who cannot afford or who do not want um, air conditioned in their homes, yeah. on a very hot day, they would choose to either go outside in a hammock under a tree or just sit under a tree because it becomes a little cooler outside. Yeah. However, in Taiwan, no. there is this um, almost this enclosed dry yeah. kind of uh, humidity. Yes. So I think based on those experiences, people are of the view that Taiwan tends to be a little warmer than Belize. Yeah, I cannot stay under the tree like one for three minutes. <laughs> Here in Taiwan, right? Yeah, I'm in Taiwan. Okay, okay. So here comes the second part. Discuss more about uh, the relationship between Taiwan and Belize. Okay. Like, so as I mentioned that we have a uh, diplomatic ties. So could you describe the, the key interaction or collaboration between our two countries? Unlike those relationships, I would say authoritarian regimes, right, mm -hmm. that are based on coercion and on control, um, Belize and Taiwan's relationship is grounded in mutual respect, in mutual understanding, and in the promotion of uh, mutually beneficial yeah. cooperation. And since 1989, when Belize and Taiwan formulated diplomatic relationship, mm. both countries have been committed to augmenting these mm. uh, relations in areas such as agriculture, education, um, health care trade and investment mm -hmm. um, and others. In fact, Belize and Taiwan had since signed um, several agreements in airspace and um, Coast Guard. And yeah. in 2022, uh, Belize and Taiwan effectuated the Economic Cooperation mm -hmm. Agreement, yes. which is an agreement that reduces um, tariffs yes. on goods exportable from Belize to Taiwan and mm -hmm goods exportable from Taiwan uh, to Belize. And concurrently, Belize has also been exploring other areas of um, business interests for the Taiwanese investors and consumers mm -hmm. in areas such as real estate development, mm -hmm. BPO, mm -hmm. agriculture, aquaculture, deep fishing in the EE, EEZ, exploration in petroleum, and so on and so forth. Yeah. So our relationship, our diplomatic relationship has been based on these mutually beneficial um, cooperation. And what I'm really interested is that we know that in the past few years, China has been strengthening their involvement and their influence in the Caribbean region. So. I'm, I'm curious, does Belize also face this kind of China's influence um, or expansion of influence or any pressure from China and your country? I will respond to that question by saying that Belize has been unapologetic in terms of its support mm -hmm. and uh, its acknowledgement mm -hmm. of Taiwan, yeah. its advocacy for Taiwan as an independent country. And uh, of course, China has been very involved in geopolitical competition to expand its reach, um, and we have witnessed the effects of that kind of expansion in our region mm -hmm. in terms of the pressure that has been placed on other countries to make a choice, and those countries had made their choice, yes. right? But in the case of Belize, Belize has also made a choice, and Belize's choice is Taiwan. Is there any room for Belize to have a formal diplomatic tie with Taiwan? There's a room for you to manage the relationship with China. Um, Belize will not be dictated to. We firmly believe in sovereign equality, the equality of uh, sovereign states, right? And Belize identifies as a sovereign state. And no one dictates to us, no country di dictates to us uh, whom our friends should be, right? Yes. We get to choose our friends yes. um, as an independent country. And as I've mentioned before, Belize has chosen Taiwan. Mm -hmm. And I believe China functions on a principle that if you choose Taiwan as your friend, you cannot be our friend. And Yeah, uh, regarding of China's effect, you just mentioned that Belize has a geopolitical 
uh, I said, advantage in the Central America and also in Caribbean region. What's your foreign policy strategy in this region, and how do you interact with your neighboring country, given the complexity in the, the politics or, or cultures or languages? So Belize maintains cordial relationship with all the countries, you know, in, in, in our region. As I've um, explained prior, Belize is geo uh, geographically located in Central America, geopolitically um, a part of uh, the Caribbean as well. We, we have access to all of these markets, right? Yeah. And they are often duty-free markets, right? Because of our proximity to the United States, we occupy a geostrategic uh, location for countries that are interested in doing nearshoring or out outsourcing um, opportunities, you know, with the, with the United States. So we, uh, we maintain that geostrategic location and we maintain our cordial relationship with the countries in the region. As in the Caribbean region, there's a lot of country probably don't have a very stable um, politics. Mm -hmm. um, their um, regime change frequently. Mm -hmm. And given with that circumstances, how does Belize maintain a relationship? What's the foreign policy uh, agenda towards these country? I had mentioned prior that Belize is committed to that principle, customary law actually, of international relations, which is to respect the the sovereignty yeah. of all countries and to not interfere in their internal affairs. So we we don't concern ourselves <laughs> with uh, those regime changes mm -hmm. or um, how these countries go about choosing their leaders. Mm -hmm. What we are concerned about is our relationship, our diplomatic relationship with these countries and to ensure that they afford us the same respect mm -hmm. and the same dignity that we afford them as independent countries. So in the current global right. situation with the like, conflicts uh, involving the United States, China uh, and Russia, Europe, so how does Belize navigate the position on the world stage mm -hmm. and what rules does Belize aim to play? Belize is committed to the principle of democracy. Mm -hmm. We are committed to the respect of countries' sovereignty. Uh, we are committed to peace, to equality, to the protection of human rights, and to just afford countries the, the respect and the dignity that they deserve. And we hope that countries of the world will also reciprocate that, um, that respect and that dignity, and to see Belize as a developing country, a country that is open for investment, a country that is open to sustainable development. And we have also been a leader and a participant in some remarkable global initiatives. Mm -hmm. For instance, in 2021, Belize and the Nature Conservancy which is an NGO mm -hmm. in, in the United States, signed the very important and meaningful uh, Belize Blue Bond, mm -hmm. which is the most significant agreement um, in regards to conservation uh, for marine conservation that our country has ever signed. And it is an agreement that uh, provided immediate uh, economic relief for Belize in return for Belize's commitment to conserve at least 30% of its marine mm -hmm. space. And this agreement has served as a successful model that demonstrates how financial, environmental, and social partners can collaborate to address global issues such as climate change, environmental protection, um, and sustainable development. In fact, this agreement has been such a successful case study that other countries of the world, such as Barbados, mm -hmm. are using it as um, 
a way of exploring similar approaches that could be applied uh, in, their, in their country. We are considered one of the smaller countries of the world. Like I, as I've mentioned, we have less than a half a million population. We have been leading in some areas as well, much as Taiwan has also been leading yeah. though a small uh, Taiwan has 23 million people, but <laughs> yeah. uh, in terms of its, yeah, it's small mask, island, right? Yeah, a smaller country. Okay. I cannot. I can see that why Taiwan and Belize are a good, good friends mm -hmm. because we do share uh, the same value in democracy, the value in sustainability, and uh, us in sovereignty, and uh, also. Um, but I wanted to ask a little bit more on the on the trade issue and the global supply chain, as it has been one of the most hot topic around. World. Um, and I read a, uh, your recent interview, which is fascinating, uh, with, was with uh, Feng Chuan Mei. And you, you actually also mentioned a little bit previously that the uniqueness of Belize uh, is the only English speaking country in the Caribbean region in Central America, and that its location connecting America and the Caribbean country and other Central American countries. You urge that Taiwanese company can actually con considering um, the nearshore outsourcing operations, investing that in, in Belize. So I'm wondering, um, as the global supply chain has been affected by the U.S.-China competition, how does Belize also being affected by this competition, and how did you, um, how does your positioning change uh, due to this uh, uh, competition? As we have acknowledged, the United States and 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 China are major global economic yes. powers, okay, right? Yes. The competition among them, between them, indisputably. Uh, affects trade routes, mm -hmm. investment flow mm -hmm. among countries, as well as economic alliances, yes. right? You did mention um, the pressure that has been placed other countries to choose a side, they had chosen their sides. And so this uh, competition between them invariably affects countries of the world, in particular um, smaller uh, countries such as Belize. However, we still maintain this very geostrategic location, having access to all of these duty-free um, markets that I have mentioned, being in close proximity to the United States, um, being a, a trade route between um, or connecting point between South America and um, Central America and uh, Mexico and the Caribbean uh, and the countries in, in the region. So we still, in spite of that competition, we still, um, our um, significance in the global supply chain is our geostrategic yes. location. Yes. Um, and I think this works to the benefit of Taiwan. Yes. Uh, in addition to the fact that we have very um, close historical ties with yeah. the United States. And as I've mentioned, we have, we, we were given a choice, we made our choice, yeah. and we, we have chosen Taiwan. So Taiwan can benefit from not just our historical ties with the United States, but also from our geostrategic location. Okay, so under these circumstances, uh, what cooperation do you think that Taiwan and Belize can have to, to make our supply chain more resilient? So Taiwan is and has always been this technologically advanced yeah. country. It has uh, great industrial expertise. Mm. And I think these two areas can complement Belize's expertise in, agric in the agricultural okay. sector, in the natural resource sector. If Taiwan and Belize can work on these, uh, on ventures, right? Uh, collaborative ventures sure. in, in, in these areas yeah. that would enhance our roles in um, the global supply chain. Belize can continue to advocate for Taiwan, mm -hmm. Taiwan's sure. presence mm -hmm. in uh, the international uh, community and Taiwan can also continue to assist Belize in terms of technical transfer, knowledge transfer, mm -hmm. to help us to create um, a more skilled uh, mm -hmm. workforce that can also benefit uh, Taiwan as well in the, in the global supply chain.
in terms of strengthening the co cooperations between Belize and Taiwan, um, as a person that have been working on these relations for a really long time, is there any differences or any challenges that we may encounter and something that we can work on in advance uh, to make our cooperation to be smoother? I think the most uh, immediate challenge that would come to mind is perhaps a language barrier. Mm -hmm. However, we have been working, both countries have been working in terms of Taiwan providing opportunities for Belizeans to study here in Taiwan. Mm -hmm. And a part of that requirement is for Belizeans to learn Mandarin. Mm -hmm. Likewise, we also have programs in Belize where uh, Taiwanese travel to Belize for, um, for studies, for training, mm -hmm. and they are taught in English. So uh, we have been working on that language barrier, which I, I would argue perhaps posed um, one of the more obvious challenges. And I'm also want to ask that we actually Taiwan and Belize, we both wanted to like create a model, as you mentioned, the blue bond um, that um, Belize has been invested in preserving the natural resources. And ta for Taiwan, we're also trying to uh, come up with a good model um, in, in terms of preserving uh, sovereignty and preserving um, democracy in the East Asia region. So we're all like in this globe, in this uh, globe, we are trying to do our, our job and build a good model at the opposite side of the world. Um, so Taiwan, in the recent year, we have been saying that Taiwan can help, Taiwan can lead. I'm just wondering, what, what do you think about these missions? And uh, in your opinion, how can Taiwan um, make a greater impact in this region, in the Caribbean region? I would definitely um, answer that question by saying that Taiwan has been leading and Taiwan oh. has been helping. If you think about it, semiconductors are ubiquitous, right? Mm. They're yeah. everywhere. Yes. They're almost in every appliance that you use. Yes. When you want to take down your car window, yes. semiconductor is in that device to help you. In your remote, for your television or for your car, semiconductor is present. Semiconductor is present in your television, right? Mm. In practically every appliance that you use. And Taiwan is the leading or one of the leading manufacturers of semiconductors. Taiwan also has one of the strongest democracies in this region. Yes. If we reflect back on the COVID-19 pandemic, at the onset of that pandemic, Taiwan was one of the countries that was able to best manage and to best contain um, that pan pandemic in, in Taiwan. Additionally, Taiwan was on the front line in terms of rendering um, assistance to the global community um, in regards to, um, or in the, in the form of um, face masks and uh, testing kits for the pandemic. So Taiwan has been leading in those regards. Taiwan has one of the strongest global economies and this dates back to uh, the 1960s, 70s, right? When Taiwan was one of the four Asian tigers, yeah. right? <laughs> yes. Characterized as such because of their advancement in technology, in manufacturing, in the strength of their economy. So Taiwan has been leading and Taiwan has been helping. And, and not because um, China has been trying attempting to uh, undermine or sabotage or isolate uh, Taiwan on the international scene negates the fact that Taiwan has been leading and Taiwan has been making significant contributions to our global communities. And what do you think Taiwan can offer more to Caribbean country and especially to your country? Another important characteristic about Taiwan is that Taiwan is interested in contributing to human development, yeah. placing emphasis on the human aspect right, of these societies. From my point of view, Taiwan can continue to invest in those areas that would help to develop people and their societies, for instance. Uh, Taiwan can continue to make um, investments in education, provide more um, mm -hmm. educational opportunities 
uh, for the people of our region um, um, and of Belize, provide more uh, contributions to health care. There is an emphasis that started with um, President Tsai Ing-wen on women empowerment right? in, in our region. Taiwan can continue to invest uh, in that area, invest more in, in, in agriculture, in trade and investment, um, just in, you know, uh, in make more contribution to the development of um, our peoples and our societies. I think we are in the end of this interview. I think our audience that uh, had really few information about Belize and today is a, a good lesson yes. for us to understand your country. If there's a chance for you to deliver one message uh -huh. to our audience, okay. what will be? I would say that um, it has been my pleasure to be in Taiwan for these three years, five months um, thus far. I have been enjoying uh, my encounter with Taiwanese. I find Taiwanese to be very helpful, as I've mentioned, right? In yes. my description of uh, Taiwan as a student. Yes. Yeah. Very helpful, um, very polite, very welcoming, very warm. Um, and that goes a far way. I, I believe it, it's those characteristics that had helped me to transition a lot more smoothly serving my country here in, in Taiwan. I have all, also had opportunities to explore the cultures um, of Taiwan. One of the activities that I had developed upon my arrival here in Taiwan is hiking. Oh, okay. Love to hike. I mean, it serves many purposes. Yeah. It's very therapeutic for me. It also gives me a workout, you know. <laughs> I'm also exploring the Taiwanese cuisines. Which one is your, be your, your favorite? One of my favorites um, would be Buddha Jumps Over the Wall. What? I don't, I don't know what... Fotel Chang. That. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yes. And that's a good choice. <laughs> yes. I really do enjoy that. I really do enjoy it. So I'm, I'm saying all of this to say that I am enjoying Taiwan and I'm hoping that Taiwanese would also accept our offer, our invitation sure. to come to Belize and to explore our cultures, to meet our people, to learn more about our society and our country and to sample our um, delectable cuisines. As I have said to people, and especially my students, right? Relationship is, is, is an integral aspect of diplomacy. And as you would agree, um, in any relationship, whether it's a relationship with family members, relationship with friends, relationship with um, a romantic partner, for that relationship to work, for it to be, um, the most effective for you to yield optimal benefits of that relationship, you have to understand that other yeah. person. You have to understand that other person. And so um, traveling to our countries, right? Engaging um, initiatives that uh, offers opportunities for people to people um, understanding mm -hmm. will help us to understand each other, will help us to strengthen our um, diplomatic relationship. And so I encourage Taiwanese to visit Belize in much the same way that I live in here in Taiwan for these many, uh, these three plus years, and I'm also enjoying Taiwan. Come to Belize and enjoy Belize as well. It's like, how long is the flight? Because we want it, we do want to book a flight. Yeah, we want bit. to book a flight. And yeah. the second question is, when is the best time to visit yeah, Belize? The season. And the third question is, uh, you mentioned there are several student programs coming to Taiwan. Mm -hmm. How to engage with those students already, like Belizean mm -hmm. student that's already in Taiwan? Yeah. Let me answer the questions in the order that you yeah. presented them to me. <laughs> The most popular route to get to Belize would be to um, fly to the United States, yeah. primarily, I believe, uh, to California. Okay. Right? And from California to Belize is six hours. Okay. And from and how does it uh, Taipei to California to LAX um, is approximately 14. 11 to 13, yeah. between 11 and 13 hours. So um, approximately to get from Taipei to Belize will be approximately 17 to well, 19 hours. Laser, laser day. Laser, laser day. Laser day. Laser day. <laughs> well, I have also said that um, traveling is its own form of education. And I traveled extensively. Yeah. I, I had traveled long distances, you know, to get to other countries. But mm. for me, um, that is very rewarding 
I would travel those great distances to get to meet new people, to get to see um, new places, to get to explore. And I am here. Yes. You know, I, I, I flew that, those 17 that to 19 yeah. uh, hours to be here. So I am, I am certain that Taiwanese can manage. <laughs> yeah, we can bear it. <laughs> to, to, to get to Belize, yes. yes. And, the, and the flights are not uh, too expensive either. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, Okay. I, I believe you can you can perhaps purchase a plane ticket to Belize um, if you're if you're flying commercial, of course, or if you're flying um, coach mm -hmm. um, between two thousand to three thousand US dollars. Okay. Yeah. The best time to visit Belize would be for me. I would visit during the summer. There's so much to do, oh. but uh, a lot of people may not want to because that's perhaps one of the hottest times yeah. in in Belize. Um, so I would say maybe October, from October to um, March. I mean, but you you should travel to Belize any time. But if you if you are trying to travel in uh, at a time when it's um, a, a little cooler, yeah. I, would, I would recommend that. So we have two independent celebrations, right? One of them is primarily for the Belizeans, and the first one is for Taiwanese society. So the president or the vice president would attend um, other members from the business community, friends, I, that designation, friends of Belize okay. um, here in Taiwan would attend that, that event. So we have other events. We are the embassy initiates um, other events that, um, that are open, that are for the public to inform them about Belize, to inform them about mm. our cultures, to inform them about our, our peoples. And so, we will definitely take your contact information so that you can be yeah. on our our invitation uh, list. Nice. Okay. Thank you for joining us today. And uh, I wish that I hope we can go to yeah, Belize definitely. In, very soon. Yeah. I am inviting you both. <laughs> and when you, you. do decide, yeah. please let me know so oh, I can help to facilitate a very enjoyable. Um, and a Let's talk about this. Yeah, let's talk about it. A meaningful visit for you both. Thank you, and we should have a good time in Taiwan. No matter how long you're going to stay in Taiwan. No, yeah. thank you. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Da xiao ma, I like it. 我是喜欢啦<笑>，<笑>对。不过当然，在访谈过程中，我跟可心其实哎有一些想法啊、哦，包含到了大使，嗯、因为我们其实开场就提到，觉得还有些地方答得有点保守，嗯。然后，但他从他的回答当中，其实也可以感受到多贝里斯他们如何在思考他们在区域间的角色。嗯、那我觉得。我跟可心应该都有一些话想再深度的谈跟聊哦。那我们会把我们的心得放在了命理选读的 Apple Podcast 会员制里面。所以如果有兴趣的人，你想知道我们到底怎么看待我们这场专访，怎么看待大使的回答的话，欢迎订阅命理选读的 Apple Podcast 会员制。我们明天见喽，谢谢大家，拜拜。